we're just about to start. So thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, hopefully you're going to really enjoy this topic. It's um, it's very topical. <laughs> the, I think everybody in real estate today is worried about whether they, them, their company, or something about of them is going to be disrupted and not relevant anymore. So we've got some really good topics today to show you how that's going to not happen with you. Um, so let's go to the next slide. I want to just uh, talk a little bit about the logistics and then we'll get into it. Uh, so if you're, if you can see on the right hand side of your screen, um, there's a little box that's called questions. And if you just click on that little gray arrow, it will open up and then feel free to ask us a question. We may uh, answer it during the conversation or we may wait till the end. So if you don't hear us answer right away, hold on that we, we may still get to it. It's just, we'll do it in the, in the context where it makes sense because we know what's coming next in the deck. Okay. Um, so that would be great. And so let me introduce everyone. So as I mentioned, I am um, Marilyn Wilson. I'm the managing partner of the Wave Group Consulting Firm, as well as the president of RETechnology.com. And I've known these guys for a long time. They've been doing some really great work around the world and in the United States. So we'll hear more about that in a minute. We've got Mark Armstrong. He is the CEO and co-founder of Rate My Agent. Um, then we have Lori Weston Davis. She's the CEO and owner and broker of Better Homes and Gardens Lifestyle Property Partners. She's also, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the VP of Industry Relations for Rate My Agent. A lot of us have multiple jobs on this call. <laughs> no wonder we never sleep. Um, and then we finally have Shelly uh, Zavitz. She's, she's a broker from the uh, Hassan Company, and um, she's the author of a really exciting book called The Your First 365 Days in Real Estate. So great panel. Um, so with that, let's go to the next slide. Um, thank you, um, Shelly, for donating these books. By the way, she's... Um, you got a lot of great press on this book, um, but if, for those that are attending today, if you wait till the very uh, end of the session, we're actually going to give away three of those books. So hold on, and um, and if you're not one of the lucky three, of course, go to Amazon and order it because it's a really, really great guide. It's getting lots of great ratings, okay? So I'm going to turn over now over to Mark Armstrong, the expert on how to be undisruptible, and have him take it away. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Marilyn. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, my job is just to introduce Rate My Age and talk about, about who we are and, and get into the idea of what it, what it takes to be undisruptible. But just very quickly, Rate My Agent is a business that was founded in Australia about five years ago. And today about 80% of all Australian real estate agents use our platform and, and we collect a review for one in three properties sold across the country. So we get great support from the industry. And one of the reasons why that is, is we started Rate My Agent with a very simple philosophy, and that was to support good real estate agents. That's the guiding philosophy we've had from day one, and it's the philosophy we keep uh, we keep uh, very dear to our hearts, and it's the philosophy we have as we roll out into the US market. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really important to understand that, that, that great agents understand their role in the marketplace and their role in their marketplace is to provide a high level of customer service and uh, and really focus on their customer. I think a lot of people in real estate get bogged down on the transaction, uh, but not so much uh, on, on the customer that they're dealing with and really the experience that the customer is going through. If we think about real estate, it's really quite, it's quite unique. Um, our customers are going through significant life changes when they transact real estate. Um, when someone gets born, when, when someone has a baby, people want to uh, upgrade their home. When they, when they, kids go off to college, they need to downsize. When, downsize. when someone dies, um, uh, someone, um, people need to transact their property. So transacting, there's a lot behind the transaction of the property. So that's what people, agents who really understand that that's what's really going on are truly undisruptible. So it's Rate My Agent's job, and we'll talk more about that as we go through this webinar, but it's Rate My Agent's job to, to simply help agents collect, share, and promote that customer feedback and, and collect those relationships and the stories of those relationships and promote them through the marketplace. I think one of the things that we see happen is, is people uh, and real estate agents have feared that customer feedback and have feared gathering that customer feedback and, and promoting that through to the marketplace. And I'm just going to show you an example of why that is. If we can just go to the next slide. This is a, I don't want to start off on a negative, but I, for me, this is a really interesting review for, for a couple of reasons. It's a negative review. And as I said, I, I don't really want to start here with a negative review, but, but um, if people take the time to read this, I find it's really interesting. Um, 
the review says I will not recommend her to others, um, um, which is fine. But the response is really interesting. What the response essentially says is, I have no idea who is writing this review. And that's really tough for a real estate agent to get a review that they can't deal with. It's out in the public domain and they can't really, they can respond to it here, but they can't call this person and find out what their concern is. They can't have a coffee with them and, and, and work through any issues because this is essentially an anonymous review. And at Rate My Agent, we believe that anonymous reviews are a real problem. And, and the only reviews that you can get on Rate My Agent are reviews from people that you have actually worked with. And the reason for this is, is reviews are so powerful. We know that 95% of the population are now going online and looking for reviews. In fact, reviews are the most powerful marketing tool that a real estate agent has. And if we can just go to the next slide, I want to show you um, a, a really powerful review and, and, and why they're so important. This is a, an agent who is, who is currently using the Rate My Agent platform. Um, and I've just taken the heading out of this review, but the review says, Anne is a truly remarkable human being. We love her. What industries do our customers tell us that they love us? I mean, this is such a unique experience. Um, where a customer will publicly say that I love my real estate agent. Um, and that just goes to show the relationships that we as real estate people build with our customers. We build long lasting relationships and friendships. Um, and these are the things that truly make good agents undisruptible. As I said, our job is to support good agents. For us, Anne is a wonderful agent because her customers, she's built such a strong relationship with, with her customers that they are publicly going out there saying that we love her um, for the job that she's done. This review is very limited though because it's just a text-based review. So it, we don't really know who wrote this review. So who loves Anne and, and what job did she do? So when we just use a text-based review, it only fills in half the picture for us. So if we can just go to the next slide, the next thing that Rate My Agent does is we actually link every review to the transaction. So now we're starting to get a full picture and now um, Anne's future customers or, or consumers who are going to read reviews about Anne are starting to get a full picture of what's going on here. So now we can see that the seller of this property um, who sold their property for $330,000 we can clearly see where the property is, the address of the property. So this review now has a really high level of authority and a really high level of, of verification. So as a consumer researching Anne, we can see that, hey, the seller of this property um, who lives around the corner from me because I know where the address is, and I may well know this person because I might, go, our kids may go to the same school or we, or we go to the same church, or we 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 go to the to the same uh, barrack for the same sporting team, or whatever the case may be. This person from my community loves Anne, so that's a really huge vote of confidence for Anne. Um, but then it doesn't doesn't stop there. Once we get a review that is linked to the transaction and has this high level of verification, we can now start to use this review in a, in a whole lot of wonderful ways. If we can just go to the next slide. Um, if we, yeah, if, if we see on the next slide here, we can now take this review and we can use that location information and we can use wonderful mapping technology to, to highlight where this person is. And if you're a consumer uh, or a potential seller who, uh, who owns a property around this area, that gives you a huge amount of confidence that, hey, Anne is someone in my community. She just sold this property around the corner from me and she might be a great person for me to contact. So in essence, that's what Rate My Agent does. We, we help people collect that wonderful feedback. Um, we then help people, um, we link those reviews to the transaction um, so we can use those, uh, those reviews in a really powerful way. And if we just go to the last slide there, um, the next thing we do is we help them promote those reviews. So very quickly, one of the big problems in the real estate industry is, is 
everyone understands that reviews are important, um, but we don't. Uh, uh, but we we don't know which review platform to use. So we can use Google and Zillow and Yelp and all these different platforms, Facebook and. So the next step of Rate My Agent is to help agents solve that problem. We collect a review once. Um, ask your customer for a review once, and then we syndicate that review all across the web. We syndicate it through Google and Facebook. We have an API integration that allows you to syndicate it through any website that you control. Um, so the idea is, is a review collection and then review syndication. So if we just go, actually there's one more slide. That's enough for me about Rate My Agent, but Rate My Agent's been in, in, uh, launched in the US around about 12 months ago. Uh, we now have over 340,000 agents that are connected directly to Rate My Agent via their MLSs. Um, we have a, a, a huge amount of verified reviews across the world and a huge amount of agents using the, our platform around the world. And, and really interestingly, we've, we've had great support from the REACH program and the National Association of Realtors, which is wonderful for us. The, the, the guys at, at REACH um, looked at our product, they vetted our product, and they said, hey, we really like this. We think this is a great product for, for, for agents in the US market. So I'm sorry if I rambled on a bit too far there, but that, that in essence is, is who Rate My Agent is. Um, this webinar is about what it takes to be undisruptable, and, and, and we think that, that being undisruptable and, and understanding what it takes to be undisruptable is, uh, is, uh, is vitally important for real estate agents. Marilyn, you know, over to you. Uh, yeah, so we're going to show a video now. Uh, it's about 90 seconds. This is one of those moments where the real estate industry seems under siege. Disruption is around every corner in the form of eye buying, discount commissions, and venture capitalists funneling big money into technology companies at an unprecedented rate. Instead of fear, we're telling the stories of focus, of effort, of above and beyond, and of unparalleled client service. These are the stories of the undisruptibles. The agents, the brokers, the influencers and the pros who earn trust for far exceeding expectations and for putting their heart and soul into the work they do every day. We celebrate the things that often go unnoticed or unnamed. The agents who care about the people they serve, who play the long game, and know that putting goodness into the world will always be good for business. It matters more than ever to plan, to incorporate systems and strategies, and to hold oneself accountable to the highest standards. Be adaptable, be focused, be undestructible. The first question that we've got here that we'd like to answer, everyone can jump in here, but I'll just start with, with what, what does it mean to be undisruptible? And, and that's really what this webinar is all about. Um, just really quickly, a, a very quick story that, that, that um, really, the penny dropped for me a number of years ago about what it takes to be undisruptible. And it was a story when um, I was working with a client, I've, I've dealt with a thousand properties, I've helped people buy and sell a thousand properties over the years. And, and this one particular client I was working with and, and we sold their property. And, and I thought we did a wonderful job, you know, we got a, a wonderful price. And, and after the property sold, um, the husband walked out of the room and, and Wendy um, started to cry. And, um, and, and it wasn't until that point in time that I really understood what was going on. And what was really going on was Wendy didn't see this as a sale of a property. Wendy actually saw this sale of the property as the end of a 30 year marriage. Um, and that, that was a really eye opening experience for me because it really made me understand that there's so much more that happens behind a transaction. A transaction is not just buying or selling property. A transaction is dealing with people's lives and, 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 and really pivotal moments of their lives. And when Wendy broke down in tears and I go, walked over and gave Wendy a hug, it really opened my eyes to the idea that, hey, as agents, we're here to help people at extremely uh, important moments in their lives, sometimes happy, 
having children and, and, and getting married and sometimes not so happy, people passing away and people getting divorced. But agents who truly understand their role in that and understand that, um, that those relationships and building those relationships are what make us truly undisruptible are the agents that will win in the end. Um, I might throw to Shelley or Laurie here and, and, and get your thoughts on, on what you think it means to be undisruptible. Well, um, actually, uh, I wanted to read this. This is actually, I'm going to quote Molly McKinley because she wrote something that I thought really, really put it into words what I couldn't about what it really meant to be undisruptible. And she said, she said, this is just the beginning of a new conversation, a celebration about excellence rising above mediocrity. A story about care and commitment rising above disinterest and apathy. A moment to redefine what success can look like beyond material wealth alone. An awakening and understanding of how we are so beautifully woven together and a push toward collaboration and reciprocity that serves in a new way. We are an industry filled with adaptable, resilient, loving people, people who actually give a shit and are willing to do the work. And I think we have suffered you know, so much negativity in the last several years that I feel like this is a, you know, a turn and a look at it in a much more positive way. Yes, there's going to be change, but we need to embrace that change. And when we do that, we become undisruptible. Yeah, Shelly, do you have any thoughts there? Well, I think that um, a lot of the people that I'm around, especially at the Hassan Company, a lot of them are relationship sales. And a lot of them put their heart and souls into every single client that they meet. And it's not just about, like you say, it's not just about the paycheck. It's about how can we create an experience for our clients that's something memorable because they're doing something that is probably one of the biggest things they're going to do in a lifetime financially. And they need a guide. And so often we're quick to jump to technology and easier ways to do things. But really, when it comes down to it, to be a really good real estate agent, it's about relationships and it's about, you know, caring for one each other, one on one each other, blah, you know what I mean? Um, in a way that's like um, bigger than anybody's paycheck. And I think that that's really what it comes down to for me. Um, the undisruptible campaign to me, I think is remarkable because I think it, finally somebody's putting up a mirror to us and say, this is all the things you guys do. Did you know? And they're amazing. And we're not promoting that. We're promoting other things and other technologies and, and whatever. But it's really that human element that we do so well. And a lot of us do so many. And we get lost somewhere in the conversation. So I'm proud mm -hmm. that you guys are doing this. I really am. Wonderful. Yeah, and and I think I think it's amazing that that we've heard so much. In, as, as a, I mean, as a real estate person, quite a passionate real estate person, but also as a vendor, um, we hear so much about what is going to uh, or how agents are going to be disrupted. You know, their jobs are, are aren't safe, and and all these sorts of things that technology is going to come in and, and disrupt them. Um, but uh, you know. Good agents and great agents understand that technology will never disrupt them. You know, who they are and the, the relationships they build um, is, is what makes them undisruptible. Um, we might go to the next slide and, and Shelley, I think this is a question for you to um, to, to tackle. Um, and the next slide says, you know, what, uh, sorry, what, what are the traits of an undisruptible agent? You've probably already touched on them there, but um, maybe expand a little bit further. I would say that, um it's a service heart, you know. Um, you come into transactions with the client in mind, like I said. I think that um, my mentor, her name is Val Thorpe, she said it best to me. It was like my first month in real estate, and she said, Do right by the client, and the money will follow. And I have held that so close to me for the last several years and try to really implement that into what I do. I decided really early I was going to be a 100% referral agent. I didn't know a lot of people and I was like, well, how do you do that? It's about trust. It's about connection. It's about being one on one with people, being belly to belly with people. I meet with more people in a week than you can even imagine because it's in the connection where people trust you. And I think where where we really do well is when we 
exercise that on a level that is starting with the client experience, what outcome would you like to have with your buyers or sellers? And then work your systems backwards. You know, that's what I do and it's and it's been working really well. I'm 100% referral agent now and I'm stoked about it. And I think that no computer button is going to replace how much I care for my people. It's just not possible. So yeah, and I think it's a really great point, Marilyn. I think your 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 sounds so good. So I'll I'll just go on here. I, I, that that word referral is is really important. And I actually think the relationship between well, the the word referral and the word relationship are almost the same thing. Um, you know, we get referrals from great relationships, and it, and it's those relationships that we build that that keep the the referrals flowing through. Um, Lauren, did you have any thoughts on, on what it takes to be un, uh, the traits of an undisruptible agent? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously we all agree that this business is about the relationships, but I think it's also about being a professional and about knowing your craft. And the agents that are really good at what they do are going to be undisruptible. If you create those relationships and you do a great job, then you will be undisruptible. Yeah, and I, th I think traditionally agents have, have feared um, bringing those relationships to life in, in a, a, from an a, a internet point of view or a web point of view because they've feared losing control of, of uh, I think you, you touched on it, Shelley, that there, there tends to be a little bit of negativity out there about the real estate industry and about real estate agents. But when you delve into that, we're all laughing because we, we know and we, we, <laughs> We, we've experienced I, I think when you read the the top 10 lists of the of the most untrusted industries lawyers politicians used car salespeople, and often real estate agents appear there and, and I don't understand why that is because we all know that these relationships we build with our customers are so strong well I think part of that is due to the fact that in more recent years particularly um, you know we've become more transactional uh, based than relationship based. I think when you know with the advent of the internet leads and you know then it became more of a numbers game and we maybe lost sight a little bit of, of that that basic part of this business which is about the relationships that you have with the people in your community and that's where the core of your business is really going to come from. So uh, I couldn't agree more. I also think too that a lot of people are in search of an easy button. You know, you're not going to build a referral business just on a whim. It takes effort. It takes a lot of your energy. It takes a lot of spending time with people when maybe you aren't with your family. There is a lot of that. And I think that people, you know, they go to those lead systems and they're, they're trying to make it easier for themselves. But really, all of the money that you're going to make this year is already in your phone. Oh, you have to call people and say, do you want to have dinner? How are you? can I help, right? We all know that, and the more that we do it, the better it is. It isn't cold calling Zillow leads or meeting someone dangerously at a house randomly, you know? I really believe that, yeah. And I, I, I think that was a, a comment I heard you. Good. Sorry, who was it? Laurie, did you wanna go? Um, I was just gonna say, I had to laugh. I was at an event recently and they were talking about lead gen and how you know how you're to generate leads as an agent and all they talked about was buying leads on the internet and it was like that is not lead gen <laughs> lead gen is, for me is you know when you're getting out there and you're building those relationships with people and it's going to bring that referral and repeat business and that's that is i think super important if you want to have a career long term in real estate i would agree too because i yeah. have a bit business for very long and the amount of time it's taken me to kind of rev up my referral engine has taken three years mm -hmm. it's taken patience and consistency and I just have to keep doing it and I know like I've had the best first quarter I've ever had I'm grateful for it but I also worked my button off last year to be able to have that and I think that the more that agents and we talk to each other especially new agents if we could spend some time with them and say look it's not going to be quick and you need to put in the work and the more that we start telling 
the newer generation that that's what it's going to take, the better the industry is going to be in the future, you know. And I, I heard you say a, a comment a while ago, Shelley, about playing the um, playing the long game, and, and and that's really what you're talking about there. You, you you're playing the long game. It's not about um, it, that transaction today or tomorrow, but it's about that long game. And I think it, what's interesting for me is is the the scorecard that that so many agents across not just the United States but across the world um, their scorecard of of of, um, of why they're good is I'm great because I've sold X number of properties or I'm great because the total sales value of my property uh, you know the properties I've sold or bought is X and even worse and and we hear it a lot is. I'm great because I made a million dollars last year uh, in in gross commissions. You know, customers do not care how much money a real estate agent makes. Customers care about the service that an agent provides and the and how well they go at transacting the property that they that they're there to do. But we use this scorecard of of I've sold the most or I've earned the most money and, and look at my flash car. And I know it's, it's all cliched stuff, but our customers don't care about that. They really just care about themselves and, and what's, what, what's facing them in their lives. Um, Mar Marilyn, I don't know if you're back on, online there, but we've got some, some echo. We, we might just go to the next slide. Um, and the next slide is, uh, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so is technology going to disrupt the role of a real estate agent? Laurie, you sort of touched on that already with Zillow Leads. Um, is technology going to disrupt? Are, are we all going to be out of a job um, <laughs> soon or what's going to happen? Uh, well, uh, you know, as the self-proclaimed geeky girl, um, you know, a lover of technology um, that does not buy leads, interestingly enough, um, you know, I'm going to say no. You know, technology is not a disruptor. I think it can be a facilitator. It can be, but I think we have to be very careful. You know, as agents, we are bombarded with all kinds of new, sparkly, shiny objects all the time. Everybody wants to sell us something. You know, to you know, help make it easier. Like Shelley said, it's that easy button. We want it to be easy. And it's not easy. You're going to have to work hard. Um, but there are ways to make that work, you know, go a little more smoothly to help you, uh, you know, be more organized about it. Um, and that's where I think technology comes in. And I think um, also that part of, you know, when you're looking at something, the, the most important thing for you to do is to look at it from the perspective that, you know, does this solve a problem that I have? If you don't have, you know, the problem that it's solving, then you don't need it. You know, you need something else. So that's kind of, you know, how I look at it when I'm when I'm thinking about technology or adding something to the business. But um, that, and I think the other piece is with technology. The average real estate agent is in their 50s, and we didn't grow up with technology. We are not digital natives, um, so there's a little fear there, and I think it, you know we have to get over that fear and be willing to embrace the what's new, what's coming, so that we can become undisruptible, so that we can uh, you know make it for the long haul here. You can't say I'm going to keep doing this because it's the way I've always been doing it. That's not going to work. You have to be willing to to change. So, so we, we do a else? fair amount of, yeah that we do a fair amount of research at wave group and consumers are oh, they echo what you're saying Lori. i hear a lot from agents that they just don't want to do it guess what you don't have a choice if you want to stay relevant and 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 you know back to shelly's point about being a servant technology can help you be a much better servant if you use it appropriately it can give you real-time responses to things it can help you share information that's going to make someone comfortable at three in the morning when they can't sleep worrying about their deal if it's going to close. There's a lot of ways it can help you. So if you're on the call and you've had that sort of blind eye, you know, I, I'm just going to ignore technology, don't. Um, it, it's, you just, I shouldn't say don't. You can't. You really can't. And uh, there's a gentleman on that just made a comment. Paul said that um, 
technology of all sorts helps him, but specifically what we're talking about here, about gathering online testimonials and online feedback. He said he has made a ton of money from that because he's lived Shelley's point about being a servant and he's been able to share it effectively because it's one thing to do it. It's another thing for people to know that you're doing it. Um, so anyway. Yeah, one of the first um, ones that I got up on Rate My Agent ended up like everywhere. <laughs> Mark had promoted it and I, my, my client was like, he texted me, he's like, I'm famous, it's everywhere. And I was like, wow, what, where are you seeing the review that you wrote? And he's like, it's on every feed that I put it on. It's just amazing and I only had to write it once and he was just so excited. And then like, there was another time for me to touch. So I was like, well, let's go for dinner. You want to hang out? Next thing I know, I'm going to have a referral. Like that's how those things work. They're car the conversation starters, you know, and that's what you want to use technology for. You want it to be another reason why you are efficient, that for me anyways, because I don't have a team. And then also like, how can you have more touches with your people so that you can spend more time with them one-on-one, -on -one, like people to people. Not on the phone, not texting, like spend time with them, see how they are, you know? Absolutely. I think that's right. I think that's where technology comes into play is, is absolutely technology um, can, can provide value for those mundane transactional things, you know, the, the, the you know, um, the, I don't know, going through from, from after the property has been negotiated and sold and transacting that property through through escrow and through to settlement. Um, you know, that's where technology can really help. Um, but it, it's never, in my mind, it's never going to disrupt the role of an agent to, to build um, to build relationships with their customers. And, and Shelley said before that that all the money you'll you'll earn is is already right in your phone. Just just pick up the phone and start building those relationships or continue in those existing relationships. Okay, this is a, a I, I I like this question. Should technology be a creator or an accelerator? And, and we've already touched on that. That there was a great book. Uh, written by Jim Collins called Good to Great, uh, and a lot of people are probably aware of it and read it. And, and Jim Collins says that the technology is not a creator, but it is an accelerator. And if we take that a step further, I, I, I quite passionately believe that. If you think about Facebook, um, Facebook did not create friendships. Friendships were around long before Facebook came along. But Facebook accelerated friendships, and and I've got I've maintained friendships with people all over the world, um, people that I've I've come over to the states and and and, and met a load of people, um, you know Shelley is someone that I, I continue that friendship with through Facebook all the time. She keeps bombarding me with stuff, and I keep bombarding her. <laughs> and I've shown Shelley how to, I've 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 actually shown Shelley how to open a bottle of beer with a spoon. So and that's what that, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that's what that's what Facebook has done for us. It, it has allowed us to accelerate that friendship. But that friendship between Shelley and I was created through the streets of New York City eating pizza um, and building that relationship. So, you know, that Facebook wasn't going to create that connection with people, but it can accelerate it. And, you know, there's a whole lot of examples around that. You know, Google didn't create information. Um, eHarmony didn't create courtship. You can really go and look at every every sort of big uh, web portal out there, and this this really stands true. Technology does not create things; it accelerates things, and I think that's so important for Rate My Agent. We understand that Rate My Agent is not going to ever replace the re the role of the the real estate agent. Rate My Agent is never going to create those wonderful relationships that real estate agents build. But what Rate My Agent can do is Rate My Agent can help you harness the value of those relationships, accelerate. As Shelley said, you know, her, her customer wrote one review and now it's, it's out there everywhere. Um, so Rate My Agent can help accelerate um, the turning that referral, the turning that relationship into referrals. It will never replace that relationship into referrals, but it can accelerate that relationship turning into referrals. Um, Laurie, what, or Laurie or Shelley, what, what do you think about, about technology being a creator or an accelerator? Uh, well, you know, I'd agree with what you, you said. I think, um, 
you know, we've seen how, you know, with Facebook, with all these other things, it's taken our, the things that are there that exist and just made them bigger in a way. I mean, it allows us to manage a little bit more. Um, you know, we had a similar experience, at, you know, to Shelly, Audrey, our agent, when we were in uh, New York. Uh, she had one of her clients send her a screenshot of her Rate My Agent review that they had left that was out there on the web and they stumbled across and were, they just got excited when they saw their own review that was out there somewhere and, um, you know, reached out to her and then that allowed her to reconnect with that client. So, um, you know, it just gives us a way, technology can give us a way to help accelerate those relationships, accelerate our business, if you will. Yeah, and I think too, you know, we need to find better ways to stay in flow with our clients. Um, let's say every seven years somebody buys or sells, it, like that's the life cycle, let's say. That's a lot of energy to keep up with that person and spend a lot of time with them when it's, again, with the long game, right? So with the review thing, it's kind of nice so that, you know, you if they're, you know, around, you can sort of like put it up, they see it there and it's another reason to touch. Or, you know, it's a reminder to say, hey, I, I run my own business. Um, do you have a referral or do you have somebody in your life that needs me? I would love to help, you know, how I work. Just another reason to, to say that you are there for service, you know, and you're not begging, you're not asking for anything that they don't want to give you because they care for you too, you know, you've built that relationship. You know, ratings are really interesting. Uh, they're interesting in a local market too, but they can be especially helpful if you don't yet have a relationship with any agent. So we were selling a home, for example, for my mom in Florida. And of course I know agents because of where we are in the business, but for, you know, even with that, it was really helpful to, to use a program like Rate My Agent to find people that you know, understand that local market. It's a little scary when it's someplace that you're not as familiar with. So it can really be helpful to sort of jumpstart a relationship that you may not have been able to form in any other way. Helps to really break yeah. the engine to break through, break through the clutter. Yeah, and and it and I think that um, the idea, and it's not just rate my agent, but technology. If I think about the examples we see, um, you, you might see uh, uh, someone from your school community who recently sell, sold a home, and um, you might know them sort of in the street, but do you know them well enough to walk up to them and say, "Hey, what was your experience with you know? I, we've noticed you just sold your house. How did you go, and what was your experience with the agent?" So that can be an awkward conversation to sort of broach that subject. But if you're sitting online and then you can see their home that they sold and you can see their feedback, you can actually get that information and that, that feedback from, from that person without having to go directly to them. And, and, and for me, that's a really big part of, of accelerating that referral network. You're taking that relationship, you're pushing that out into the market, a much bigger group of people will see it. People who may well be too far removed from the transaction to actually go and talk to the person about it now has access to that information um, to make an informed decision about, well, should I call this agent or not? And for me, that, that's the real power of technologies. As I said, it, it, will never, it will never be a creator of those relationships, but it can absolutely accelerate them and accelerate referrals. Um, and as a real estate person, I know, I, I, I built a, a reasonably big uh, real estate business in Australia here, and uh, and I lived and breathed on referrals, as we all do, as, as Laurie does, as Shelley does, and, and as most disruptable agents live and breathe on referrals. There's a, a, an interesting comment here from Ryan, who said that technology is not what impresses the consumer, it's the experience that the technology helps create that does. So really underlining what you guys are saying is it's just, a, it's one tool. I, there was a woman once that it described it this way. I thought it was great. She said, technology is like a beautiful purse for an amazing suit. It doesn't make the suit beautiful, but it makes the whole program more effective. That, that was a great way to visualize what we're talking about. Yeah, and, and actually it's, it's a really great point because technology, when it's working perfectly, should almost be unnoticeable. It, it's just working. It, when technology is not working is, is when, we notice, when we notice it. When our laptop's not working, when our go-to meeting audio is not working, you know, when the <laughs> video is not working, you know, <laughs> you know, that's when we notice it. 
Um, but when technology is working perfectly, it, it should actually be just something that we don't notice at all. It just facilitates something and it ticks along in the background. Uh, and, and I think for me that, you know, as, as, a, as a technology person and real estate person, I think that's marrying those two things together just to make, a seam, to make technology seamless and add value to, the, to, um, to what the agent's already doing is, is, uh, is so important. So I think we're up to the last slide now before we've got some questions. And um, uh, the, the last slide is what role does rate my agent play with an undisruptable agent? And, and, and I'll just touch on this, but I might throw it open to Laurie and, and Shelley as well. But, but um, look, look, from my point of view, um, it, it, it is really simple. Rate my agents is not here to, to um, step on the toes of real estate agents. Um, as I said at the start of this, our passionate philosophy is to support good real estate agents. Um, it's not to compete with real estate agents. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to get their hands on, uh, sell leads to agents and get hands on agent commission. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that want to use data, agent data against the agent. We're quite a unique um, company here. Um, it's one of the reasons why 80% of Australian real estate agents love our platform and use our platform. It's because we, we follow that principle of simply to support good real estate agents. And we do that by, as you've seen and as we've spoken about here, um, bringing those relationships to life, um, helping agents collect those wonderful reviews, uh, helping agents share them. As Shelley and Laurie have indicated that, that their, their clients have already seen reviews out in the marketplace and constantly engaging with our, with our customers out in the marketplace um, and showing them, showing them what we're really doing. And it's not, it's not that we're earning a million dollars a year and it's not that we've just sold $5 million worth of real estate. What's really important is that, hey, I just sold for your neighbour and, and, uh, and this is what your neighbour thought about my performance uh, or my, my role. And, and I have a great relationship with your neighbours. So if you're considering selling selling your property, then I'd love to build a great relationship with you as well. And that's really the essence of, of Rate My Agent. I might, Shelley and Laura, if you guys have any thoughts on, on, on how you see it from your end. Um, well, I think, I think it's really important um, because it helps you to build that value proposition. And I think today, more than ever, you know, the consumer is asking the agent, you know, what are you going to do for me? You know, why do I need you? What, you know, why am I paying you this money? And I think being able to, um, you know, verbalize what value we bring to the transaction is so important. And I think the reviews, the, you know, being able to consolidate and have all our reviews in one place helps us to support that value proposition. And it helps the consumer to be able to see, you know, what people are saying about us, what we did for them. So I, I think that is huge in, in today's world that agents are having to prove themselves more and more. And I, and I think it's important to be undisruptible because I feel like, uh, you know, as time goes by, there's going to be fewer and fewer of us out there. I mean, I, We've lived, you know, and some pretty great times, um, but I think with the way everything's going in the industry, I think it's going to be the ones of us that can prove our worth and are doing a great job and are building those relationships are the ones that are going to, to survive in the end. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> I'd also say, too, that in marketing, in marketing in general, um, what other people say about you will always be more powerful than you ever say about yourself. And that's what endorsements and ratings and reviews are all about. It's about someone else verifying that what you say in the meeting, that you're the best listing agent in the world, best negotiator in the world, is actually backed up by someone else who said, she negotiated that amazing and I'm so glad she was here. That's so much more powerful than me saying, I'm the best, you know? So. Yeah, and and I and I think a lot of us, a lot of us as agents, um, you know, say that that we're the best, and 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 I think that the most powerful thing, as you said, there, Shelley, is is to say, it's not actually for me to say I'm good. It's for other people to 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 say that I'm good at my job. I mean, we can all stand there and say we're wonderful, um, but it's it's more important when people around us say that we're wonderful. Um, it's better yeah, for all of us, I think. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> I mean, we've all learned from Amazon about review, you know, that third party review and believing, you know, what someone else does about the product, whatever it might be, is, is you know, much better than anything I could say about myself. So, yeah. So we, we have a question um, from a broker. Um, Lori, I think I want to direct this one to you to start and everybody can jump in. But um, obviously, you guys are very confident in your abilities. You, you, you know that you do a good job and you're, you're willing to put yourself out there and be vulnerable to ask people that question. But there are many agents that shy away from this whole concept of ratings because they're like, oh, what if someone says something bad about me? And it could be that they're just paranoid. It could be that they know they didn't do as good a job on that deal as they should have. We don't know, right? But as a as a coach within your own business, Lori, how, how do you get people over those sort of insecurities and that fear? Because we know that when you do the right thing, and, and most agents do pretty much all the time, right? When they do, they're going to get credit, but they're afraid that that somehow it's, being that public is, is fearful to them. How, how do you get them over that? Absolutely. I think that is a huge fear of agents is that they don't want to hear anything bad. But mm -hmm. I think the best thing you can hear is the bad things. Those are the things that you know you're going to be able to figure out what I did wrong, how you can improve, and how you can be better next time, and how you might be able to take a client that wasn't happy and do something that will turn them into that happy client that will talk you know, about you positively out there in the world. Otherwise, you can bury your head in the sand and continue doing what you're doing, and you know you might be losing out. And not even knowing it. I mean, we had that happen personally. It was a while back, but you know, I, we got a review from a client. It was actually about a vendor that was used during the process of the transaction that they had some dissatisfaction with that we knew nothing about until we got that review back. And then we were able to go back and address it and made them a happy client when they were not so happy before. So I think the best thing you can do is find out those negative things. And, and, you know, it's like we said, if you go on to Amazon and you see a product that all it has is five stars, that seems a little suspect. You're, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't have a not five star review um, somewhere along the way, then you aren't human. I mean, we're not all perfect. Um, it's about learning from what we do. And, you know, as a broker, if, if, you know, I have an agent who has a review that, you know, isn't stellar then you know i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna say get out of here you don't come back i'm gonna say let's figure out what went wrong and how we can make that better next time now if they keep right. getting reviews, that's a different story <laughs> for the flip side of that and, too and, and I, I totally agree with you that that's like everybody can improve we all want feedback because sometimes it's not even it wasn't something critical it was just something small that could really make a big difference but mark looking at the entire amount of reviews that you get um, I've heard this from other groups that do this type of work that generally reviews are very, very positive. That the the negative is 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 the outlier. Is that true? Yeah. Look, I think I think in real estate, when you when you get a review from the customer, um, they tend to be very positive. So if you've worked with a seller or you've worked with a buyer, um, that tends to be a very positive experience because both the seller and the buyer achieve the objective that they set out to achieve one sold and one bought so that tends to be a very positive experience so so there's no doubt that when you get reviews purely from your customer they tend to be more positive where the negativity from real estate comes is from people that are outside of the transaction people who miss out on buying the property um, because maybe they can't afford it. Th those people are very emotive about their feedback. They, in some cases, when the, real estate is an extremely emotive asset, I've never heard anyone say that they've fallen in love with their shares. But I've heard a lot of people fall in love with real estate, fell in love with that house and 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 you know that beach home or whatever it may be. So when people um, fall in love with something and then don't get it. Um, there's a huge emotive response to that. And, and I, so I think I think there's a lot of people outside of the transaction that create a lot of noise in real estate. But when you're speaking to just your customer, to your buyer or your seller, there's a lot of positivity there. Um, so we, I, I think we certainly do see a, a, a lot of um, 
a lot of positive reviews because, as I said, it, it, it is positive. Just going back on onto the negative reviews, I think it's, I think um, we sh I agree with Laurie. We should embrace them. You know, feedback is is a gift, um, and uh, and and getting that feedback and understanding, you know, how we can improve is a wonderful thing. Um, there's an old saying that it's it's not the mistakes we make, it's how we deal with the mistake. We all make mistakes, you know. Um, so mistakes are a part of life, but some people deal with mistakes better than others. Some people put their hand up and say, you know what, you're right, I could have done better there. Um, this is how I'm going to rectify that for you now. Um, and research clearly shows that as a, if a consumer is reading online reviews um, and they read a negative review, they will all read the response. How do we deal with the negative feedback? And if we deal with the negative feedback in a very positive way and we address it and we own it, um, in the eyes of the consumer reading that review, they have a much more positive view of, of you as, as an agent than they would if um, you didn't respond to it. Um, or as even as Laurie said, if it's all just five stars, because five stars, uh, it doesn't mean much. But people, people understand that we're human and, and that we do make mistakes, but as I said, it's how we deal with the mistakes. My, we my, have a question. Oh, go ahead, Chell, Lori. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to say my my kind of my mantra with the you know about this is like you can't fix it if you don't know it's broken. So ask. You need to ask. Good question. Um, so Absolutely. we have a question from Sheila. She says, when you send out a request to your clients for a review, what's the percentage of clients who actually do the review? Do you have any any statistics on that, Mark? Yeah, it's a great a great question. Um, it, it, it's very high. So in in uh, in the US, it's around about fifty five percent. In Australia, it's around about sixty percent. So so it's it's growing in the US. And the yeah. reason for that is is we make it really easy. So a, an agent sends out a review request. Um, unlike some other platforms, I don't want to attack Google or anything like that. But but other platforms, you have to log in and then post the review. And if you don't have a Gmail account. Now, Google's um, conversion rate's about 10% because mm. not everyone has a Gmail account. And, and if we do, we can't remember our passwords. But with Rate My <laughs> Agent, the review request gets sent out. <laughs> the review request gets sent out. Um, click a link, type in the review, push submit. Um, and interestingly, around about 50% of our reviews are posted on a mobile device. Um, so that just goes to show how easy it is to post a review. So, so we're nudging, we're, we're getting closer to 60% in the US. We're, we're pretty proud of where we're at. It's sort of between 50 to 55 and, uh, and that's growing every day as the awareness. And, and I think it's, there is an onus on the agent as well. We do see some agents who have a conversion rate of 100%. And we have, we see agents who have a conversion rate of down at sort of 20 or 30%. And the agents who have a conversion rate at 100%, a they let their know they let their customer know it's coming. You know they pick up the phone or or when they're signing the contracts they say, hey guys, I'm going to send you a review request. Are you happy to write me a positive review? So they get confirmation that the review is going to be positive before they even send it out, and they let the customer know that the review is coming. And when they send the review out, they type in a nice message. Hey guys, it was wonderful working with you. You know, great, good luck with your kids' soccer game on the weekend. They personalise it and they send it out. Um, so there is an onus on the agent. We, we can we can do a little bit here to make sure that conversion rate goes up. But as I said, across the board, it's 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 around about fifty five percent. I would agree with that too. Um, is the setup to a review is probably one of the most important things to get one. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of tandem that with my lender. Um, she'll kind of tee it up when we're at the signing table, you know, how is it with Shelly? I get really nervous every time and I sweat a lot. I'm like, why are we doing this? You know, but it needs to happen because, because and she always does it when I'm not ready. Anyway, but she'll say, you know, how was it? By the way, Shelly is her own business. It would be really helpful. Would you mind doing a review for her? And I'm sitting right there and I'll probably make a joke because that's what I do when I'm nervous. And then um, eventually when it comes to actually doing the review, they do it right away. I, I haven't had any time that I've had to go back and say, oh, hey, you know, because they're excited for me too. Like something, the tee up to that, they were already expecting it. And I think that is really, if you really want reviews to work for you, 
is, is the tee up has to happen first. So, so Sheila's okay. asking a question. If you get a review, I'm sorry, Lori, if you get a review that you disagree with, can you respond or are they made public immediately? Uh, so, so as soon as you get a review on Rate My Agent, the agent is notified with an email. Um, they, they, they are posted on Rate My Agent straight away, but in real time, the agent gets an email and the agent can respond to it immediately. Um, so we, we recommend that every review is responded to in a perfect world, positive or negative or indifferent, every review should have a response because um, it, it shows that engagement and it shows that, um, it shows that, um, um, that, that, uh, that relationship. Yeah. Lori, you had something to say. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I just wanted to add, you know, Mark had touched on the fact that um, many of the, the responses come from a mobile device. And I think one of the key things is Rate My Agent allows you to ask and send that, that request through a text message as well. So if it's a client that you tend to text with a lot and you can tell them it's going to come to you in a text, because I think a lot of emails get lost. So, you know, I think using that, that text part of a tool, and you can choose whether or not to do it that way. You're not going to text everybody because, you know, some people don't like that or it's not their thing. But if it's a client, and there are many of them that you, you tend to text with, I think that's a great way to uh, get a higher, you know, number of the reviews to come back. We have, we have another question, Mark. Um, will rate, rate, rate My Agent reviews show up through Google and Facebook? And if so, there's a couple people that wanted them on Google, but they weren't sure exactly how to do that. I don't know if there's some training available on that, but uh, do they come through Google? First of all, there certainly is. We have a great support team there in in, uh, in Carlsbad, California, who, who can certainly guide people through how to connect these things up. And, and um, what, what we aim to do at Rate My Agent is there is a setup process set up, connect your Google My Business account, um, connect your Facebook account, set a schedule to post, and then and then it's set and forget. So in, in terms of Facebook, um, there's two ways that we can promote and share reviews through Facebook. We can do it through our social media manager, um, which means you just hook up your Facebook account. It's a click of a, a button. Um, it automatically hooks up your Facebook profile, and then you set a schedule. So you might say, I wanna share my latest review on Facebook. Um, you know, every Wednesday morning at eight o'clock and our system will just do that every Wednesday morning at eight o'clock. Um, but we can also access um, Facebook's ad network. Um, so, you know, when we post into our own into our own Facebook page, we're sharing it with people we already know. Um, but we also want to share our customer feedback with people that we don't know yet. So we can access uh, Facebook's ad network. Um, uh, it, there's a, a fee, obviously, to, 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 um, to advertise through Facebook. But again, with three clicks, we can convert the review into a digital ad um, and we can um, advertise it through Facebook and Google's ad networks in the same way. Google's a little bit different. Um, with Google reviews, um, the, there's, actually, there's actually multiple places we can, we can uh, ways we can use Google. Get rate major reviews in, into Google. So, um, Every time someone posts a review on Rate My Agent, we ask them to um, to then uh, post that into Google, into Google reviews. It's not an automated process because Google doesn't allow you to automate the process, but it is. It means that the agent doesn't have to. Sorry, it means the customer doesn't have to rewrite the review. They just click a button, open it, it opens Google reviews straight away, and they right click, paste it in, and away they go. There is a barrier to entry there because um, if they don't have a Gmail account um, or, or you know that they they need to log into Google to do that, so that conversion rate um, is not going to be a hundred percent because we're relying on Google's review network. But we we get it. Um, the conversion rate of our reviews moving into Google is the same as if you sent your per, a person straight to Google to write a review anyway. So it, it and it, in some cases it's even higher. But there is a wonderful tool within Google that we love, and it's called Google Posts. Um, and we might send something out um, after this to everyone so they can see it. But within the Google My Business section, um, there's an area where you can post um, restaurants, posts, you know, uh, photos of, of uh, their menu and, and meals. And um, with what Rate My Agent can do is, is we can get every one of your reviews to post into Google My Business into the post section. And that's really important. We understand that the more life you bring to your Google My Business page 
and every single agent in the country can set up their own Google My Business page. And the more content we can push into Google My Business has a significant SEO benefit because Google loves to see changing content and things evolving. And again, via our, via our tools, um, you can set that up once. You can hook up your Google My Business account and set up a schedule to automatically post into Google Posts um, and, uh, and away you go. That's so wonderful. There, yeah, so there's, there's, yeah, there's a number of ways that Rate My Agents is full of tools um, and, and it's, it's about exploring them, setting up one or two to start with um, and then exploring all the different tools we've got there, Google and Facebook and, and agent marketing reports and listing reports and review and widgets that you can flow through to your own website and APIs. That There's, there's a whole, whole lot of tools that you can use. Well, we got a great comment that I want to read to everybody that came from Paul. He said, referrals are feedback and testimonials for free. Who does not like no cost for buyers and sellers? My business now is mainly on this way with today's market. This is what I was looking for to promote my business and it found, it meaning Rate My Agent, found me as I watched your webinars. I was looking for a system and it is funny how technology finds the way. So it, I'd say he's liking it. <laughs> Good job, Paul. <laughs> um, Thanks, and I Paul. wanted to, I wanted to highlight to everyone, if you look in the chat box, which is in that same uh, right hand box where we, where we showed you where the questions were, if you click on that little gray triangle called chat, you'll see a link right there, which is a way for you to activate your Rate My Agent profile right now. So if you just click on that, it'll take you right into the Rate My Agent system and uh, you can become part of the movement, or as we were calling it. So um, with that, let me see if we have any other questions. Um, no, but I, Shelley, you have a, definitely some fan, a fan base on this call. <laughs> There's a lot of people that love you. <laughs> oh, I know what I have to do. <laughs> I, have to, um, I have to give away some of your books, so let me do that real quick. All right, let's see. First one is gonna go to Christy Henderson. Yay. Yay, Christy. Well done, Christy. <laughs> Next one's going to go to um oh this to Goldie um Patton or Patine. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name wrong, sorry. And our third one is going to go to let's see, let's send it to Margaret Westcamp. So thanks to everybody for attending today. Um, thank you for, congrats for the three that just won the book. And Shelly, if people want to buy the book, it's, I assume it's on Amazon? Yep, and it is called, again, Your First 365 Days in Real Estate. It sounds like it's a must-have for everyone that wants to be successful in this crazy business. So Thank you. Uh, with that, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Shelly. Thank Lori. Thank you, Mark. Um, and thank you, Mark, for, for making a program like this that really is in, so, so powerful for agents that really do want to be servants to their clients. So um, with that, I will uh, let us go away here. If you have any any comments, um, feel free to send them to me at Marilyn at RE Technology if I, about the webinar. Speaking of feedback, if there's anything we can do better for that, that would be great. And uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful selling year. Thank you so much. See you.